Yes, and welcome to Chapter 3 of our in-depth look at Shock Treatment, the spin-off to Rocky Horror. I hesitate to say the word sequel because it would be hard to imagine that both films exist in the same universe. So let us continue. Oh, that's just too bad. I wish I couldn't hear anything right now. Oh well, while that's going on, it's time for Betty to do a little research on on Farley Flavors and his connection to Brad Majors. But first, she discovers that Mac and Nation McKinley are just character actors, not real medics. So even Neely's dressed up as a nurse. It's Ike, and, it, and Betty discovers that, well, Brad and Farley are twin orphans, long lost twin orphans. because we couldn't book the B-52s. They were expensive. But at least Judge Wright is there to break Brad out of the loony bin. Focus on one thing, please, I beg you. So they managed to break Brad out of the loony bin. Oh, well, I suppose there's time for one final toast before the actual show begins. That's what I keep trying to tell everybody, but no one believes me that happy endings are an illusion. And so, Dr. Judge Wright and Betty break Brad out of the nuthouse, and now it's time for the big show to begin. Farley favors Faith Flactory. Ah oh, yes, Miss Mental Health. And the crowd slowly reacts. Seriously, that's the worst slow motion scene I've ever seen. And so everyone rises, assuming the President of the United States is going to be attending this event. I'm pretty certain that Reagan would have more important things to do. Well, fortunately for us, it is not Reagan, it's just some fellow named Erwin Lapsey. who can't even say his own name right. Yes, he shows off a brand new Cylinder Deluxe Convitable. Oh yes, remember tape decks, children. <laughs> oh well, Max snatches the keys from Irwin and, well, is shown the way out. And to show what a little loop noodle he is, the curtain even closes on his face. Whoops. Oh, jeez. Hmm, now they seem to have trouble finding their way out of this maze. Hi, Dr. Nick! Ah, yes. And so now the blind can see, thanks to Janet. And it was a gift. And who gave Janet that gift? Why, it was none other than Farley Flavors himself. Wearing a suit that I imagine even Donald Trump would be embarrassed to wear. You're going to need all the friends you can get, my friend. Oh, jeez, they just went back to the terminal ward. Oh, well, at least Brad knows which way to go, and he can walk and run now. Good thing, too, we're going to need him to carry the rest of this film. On a personal level, this was always my favorite scene in the film, because Brad finally fights back. Why did you... 
So now we find out that Farley really wasn't all that interested in Janet anyway. He just picked her only because, well, she was married to Brad. And we get the most interesting tongue twister I think I've ever heard in a film. Yes, my definite kudos to Kristen. My definite kudos here. Good one, Cliff. Yes, this is Cliff D. Young having a duet with himself. Still, it is good to see Brad finally fighting back here. Apparently, the song sequence was so gripping that it causes Farley to twitch his eye. Well, that is a fair point, yes. So finally, Janet makes her decision. And she chooses Brad. So what do you think of that, Twitchy? And the crowd keeps shouting out at them. Yes, yeah, so Janet loses her Miss Mental Health title. But at least she gains Brad back. Happy endings all around. And so now Macy Struthers has made the new Miss Mental Health. Betty flicks the bird to Ralph. So, Macy Struthers has now made the new Miss Mental Health and, well, time for a big party to begin, I guess. So the studio audience is being passed out straight jackets to wear, I guess. I don't know why. And Neely here is pretty much left in the dust. No Farley for her king. So Brad and Janet are back together again. Yes, we have another interesting song that... Actually, I say interesting because it isn't bad. And at least they're gonna do it anyhow, anyhow, no matter how the wind is blowing. And everybody's happy. Yes, the band basically hotwire the convertible so Brad can drive it out of there. And we've got a party in the insane asylum here, with the entire studio audience wearing black and white striped straight suits and straight jackets. Oh well, at least everybody's happy, and we finally get that happy ending that was so lacking in Rocky Horror. Without the keys to start the car, well, the band hotwire the convertible so Brad can drive them out of there. And we have that narrator from the beginning of the film giving us this insight. Couldn't have said it better. Oh, well, at least now the thing is over. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this shock treatment. The 1981 slash sequel spin-off to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm personally glad that it's over, but is it a bad movie? Mm, not on its own, it's not. It's actually quite good if you evaluate it on its own. As a follow-up to Rocky Horror, mm, it's not exactly the best. But then again, I don't wish to be too biased. It does have a happy ending. It ends much happier than Rocky Horror, so to that film's credit, I will give it that. Join us next time for Masterpiece of Crap Theater, when we'll be re we will be reviewing something that is, well, probably not musical, and certainly nowhere as good as Shock Treatment actually turned out to be. From all of us at Masterpiece of Crap Theater, this is Les Thespian saying, we shall meet again.